God Hits. for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So y'all, today is the last day of the forgiveness series. And if you have not, I want to tell you early on, make sure you like, you share, you subscribe, turn on your notifications. But most importantly, if you are following this series, make sure you go to the description box below and select the link to download the free ebook and you can follow along with us. So today, guys, we're talking about miscommunication, un- unforgiveness, which is based on or inspired by miscommunication. So this one here is a very tricky one because this one can manifest in multiple ways. And if you're not careful, you can really miss the opportunity to see God move and allow you to communicate on a higher level. Um, If we go back, though, guys, I want to talk about just briefly our first day. We talked about forgiveness of self. So I will also have there will be a link below the book and that will be the entire series. It's only five episodes, including this one. So if you're just catching this one, then just start over and you can listen to all of them completely. And this is going to bring everything together. Okay. so with that being said. Day two was about forgiving an abuser. The reason why these things are so important to break down and to separate are because a lot of times when it comes to unforgiveness, we can kind of loop it up and throw it into one ball. But the truth of the matter is how you solve unforgiveness is the same, but how you get there could be completely different. Um, you can You can solve this by... Just doing what God wants us to do, which is basically finding a way to walk out the process of forgiving someone and letting God take over from there. Or you cannot do that and you can suffer the consequences of not doing that in a way that best pleases God. Right. So I found that when you're dealing with forgiving yourself, it's very different from forgiving an abuser. And then when you're dealing with ego, miscommunication and control, Those three groups together, those are more similar in approach, but they're all very much different than what the experience is like for someone who is struggling with forgiving someone who violated violated them or abused them. And it's very different from you having the conversation of forgiving yourself. Okay, so I want to make sure that if you are following along, you're on the same page with me and I am in the book. And if you scroll down to page 19. I'm sorry, I apologize. Page 21. That is where we talk about miscommunication. Okay. So the scripture that we stand on for that one is James chapter one, verse 19. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to anger. That is usually where the issue comes in because most people are not slow to do any of those things. I believe that people who have experienced any kind of trauma or any type of negative experiences that they are often holding from childhood, or maybe maybe even as an adult, they may have gotten into something that has caused some type of breach, and now you have walls up and you really don't want to do things the way you used to. That can also cause knee-jerk, knee-jerk reactions like anger, and instead of being slow to speak and peeping it out, you're doing it like really fast and just super, super blunt, and it's way less effective because you didn't take time to think about it, right? So check this out. If you go to page 21, this is what it reads. When you experience miscommunication based on forgiveness, these are some, but not all of the things that the enemy can use against you. And these are seeds that he can plant in you. Now watch this. Some of these you may be feeling or some of these things you may be having bouts with and maybe you have not had them before. Okay, so let me give you an example. A sign that you are not forgiving someone and you are not sure if it's ego or control or all of the other ones. A sign, a red flag that it is a miscommunication level of unforgiveness, which means that 
if something was miscommunicated, then that means you have to go to God to give you clear communication. Because let me tell you what happens there. No matter what that person says or does, you are not going to forgive them because you don't understand it. How do you forgive something you don't understand? Do you see how crafty the enemy is? Especially, you know, even if you know that that's not necessarily something that that person is accustomed to or that's not a way that they behave. It is set up for you to ruin and destroy relationships that were not meant to be that way. Now watch this. This might be something that sticks out to you. You might be feeling a high level of frustration, trust issues, assumptions, rush choices, idleness, confusion. You could often be led astray. You have misinformation. You are overthinking, gullibleness, being impractical, intrusive thoughts, and you have an obsession with answers. Now, let me break this one down a little bit. Somebody might say, well, what do you mean gullible? Let me tell you what happens. If you are in a situation where people are dealing with miscommunication and you just so happen to expose that to the wrong people or some type of situation that is meant to cause you from operating operating in a way that God may want you to operate, you can think that you are super wise and you are fully self-aware and you know exactly what's going on. But if you are not in a position that God wants you to be in and the enemy sees that there's an opening, you can think you're the smartest person in the room, but you could end up being the most gullible because you can start to believe something that's not true. And you can create this narrative and then it starts all these other ones that I was talking about. Not only that. You get gullible, you have misinformation, you let us straight of confusion, idleness and all of these things. And you don't know where it came from. And the biggest gag is there's so many times these things are plotted and things are meant to not. How can I say this, y'all? Help me out, Lord. Some of these things are meant for you not to walk in the fullness of what you called to do. That is what it's designed for. And you may not understand that and you may not see it, but I'm going to break down to you real quick. We're still on the same page, but let me tell you what the actual breakdown is of this. Okay. The enemy comes to prevent or stop foundations from flourishing. So I want you to think about anybody in your life right now where there's huge, huge miscommunication. And remember, there could be anger, trust issues with that person. And I'm talking about this from both sides tonight. So I want you to catch it. I want you to hear it from the person that is angry at someone because tonight you're realizing that something was miscommunicated to you and you're pretty much burning them at the stake and you're refusing to forgive them. And let me just be clear. If it's a uh, forgiveness is also not. Oh, no, I mean, you know, it's cool, but nah, that's not necessarily forgiveness because sometimes that can be high level unforgiveness under the guise of I don't care. But let me tell you what else. Sometimes I don't care is numbness. So if you are causing yourself not to feel it or blocking it off with a wall and you don't want to be bothered, that actually might be the worst form of unforgiveness because it's brewing. Unforgiveness hits different. Unforgiveness does not mean That everything will go back to what it was. But a person posture, posture when they really do forgive you, it's different. And that's something we're going to talk about tonight, too. This is also something in the book. So how about this? The goal is to get you to hold the fact that something was miscommunicated to you as a badge of honor, as a victor. And you want to shut out the others or the opportunities involved. This demonic tactic often ruins people's missions. Watch that. Remember some of the other ones from the other days? It was like, hey, you know, it'll stop your relationship. It'll stop your business. But this miscommunication is meant to stop your mission. It's meant to stop your follow through capabilities. Because guess what happens if you feel like something was miscommunicated with you? You don't want to follow through anymore because you feel like every time you're trying to follow through, it's like you just again, they committed to misunderstanding you. It's like, my goodness, what is the point if every time it's this, it's always going to end up like that? Nobody wants to be bothered with that. And that is the thing that causes the biggest headache. That is the thing that causes the biggest struggle. And that is the thing that causes the most pain. Because what you don't understand is this. There's a very, very specific agenda to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you leave yourself susceptible to that, then you will fall victim 
to that every single time because you're not protecting yourself. So watch this. If this thing is meant to jack up your mission and to jack up your follow through capabilities, listen, the unforgiveness of miscommunication has ruined countless friendships, potential blessings and major breakthroughs. This is usually an easy fix once the one holding the grudge can look beyond the excuse me, can look beyond the current circumstances and revisit how to communicate moving forward. But let me tell you what that's a problem. I know when I was on that end and I didn't want to forgive the person, that is a problem. Because unless I'm convinced me doing that and setting them free and not burning them at the stake and unforgiving them and and keeping them under the spotlight, unless something happens where I feel, well, excuse me, at the time, unless something happened that made me feel like I can do that and I could trust them again or it wasn't going to be no foolishness, there was no way I was going to do that. It didn't matter what nobody said. If I had already believed that that that's what was going on, then I wasn't deviating from that. Now, let me tell you what's funny. When somebody is dealing with miscommunication, this might be a thought that they have. How dare they not measure up to the story I created about them in my head? They should have read my mind. See, I wrote this book like a couple of weeks ago, right? I put all this together a couple of weeks ago. So my mind had already been going through the process of like really looking at myself from both sides of this, right? I'm not, I'm bringing this all home for all of us, but I'm going to use myself as an example because I find people can really relate when they know that you actually been through what you're talking to. That's not always, excuse me, what you're talking about. That's not always necessary, but I think when you're talking about something like forgiveness, it's important that people can see the human side of it and they can see what happens, you know, full circle, right? So, One of the things that I realized was when a person feels like you've miscommunicated something to them and they don't want to forgive you is because whatever the thing was in their mind, whatever the agenda was in their head, it appears that the person you're angry with miscommunicated something to you. But the truth, the real truth is that you did not communicate properly to them what you thought it it was going to be. And because of however it all panned out, it was just easier to just not forgive them. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys this great example of something that I experienced with a dear friend of mine. Right. I was kind of on the outside. So I'm going to tell you what happened. So basically, I have a friend and they were in this really great scenario for themselves. They were able to get a lot of money doing it. It was great. It was a great endeavor for them. Right. And what happened was. In order for them to complete this, there was another person that had to be a part of it. This, In fact, that person was the focal point of it. Almost like the way it looked was like they couldn't, they literally couldn't do it without this person. That's the way it looked. That's the way the enemy wanted to make it look, right? So what ended up happening was my friend kept trying to do all of these really, really cool things to try to make sure this thing came together for them, right? And when she started to look at the whole scope of everything, she realized that, hey, you know, I'm really trying to do this and I I really can't do this based on the rules of what this thing is. But I'm going to go talk to my people and I'm going to see if I can make something happen for her. Right. Well, that ended up getting crazy and she started getting attacked. Like it, it got to the point where it was. It was made to believe that every single thing she did and everything she said was a lie. It was under attack. You know, you act like you this good person, but you're not really this good person. You said you was going to help us do this. I mean, it just ended up being brutal. And I can remember just kind of being on the outside, still trying to keep my cool, but still just saying like, yo, like this is something that's odd about this, like something is not right. And what we ended up discovering later was that the entire time God was in it. But my friend stretched, even I stretched being on the outside of the situation, but we all had to stretch because there was a bigger thing going on. Once everything was cleared up, that person came back and apologized and all was well. But the bigger lesson was what was ahead was so incredible. Okay, this was so incredible that. When we were able to look back and look at all of the stuff that was coming, I'm like, oh, my God, we couldn't even see that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could not even see that coming, you know. And 
her entire her entire mindset, her entire posture, it completely changed once she was able to see the bigger picture. Now, I will say this to you. Sometimes, y'all, when you are stuck with unforgiving somebody, I mean, showing someone unforgiveness, God will send a messenger. He will send somebody to come in and maybe speak to you or interject on their behalf. That had to happen for my friend, and it also had to happen to the person that was just coming at her crazy. That is the type of thing sometimes, y'all, when you are in a miscommunication situation that is often hard to deal with. Because usually when it's that and you feel like that person, again, we're not saying it out loud. Now, our ego is not going to let us say it out loud. Our ego is going to say really and truly internally, we're saying we just mad because she couldn't read my mind. He couldn't read my mind, whatever the case is, right? When that's that's not fair. You cannot expect somebody to read your mind and then you burn them at the stake because they don't. It's not their respo- it's not their responsibility number 1 and number 2. They shouldn't even do that. Like that shouldn't even be a thing. You know? And so what we have to understand up in this space right here is that there is a way that God deals with miscommunication. And the hard part is for us to literally allow ourselves to be in the space where he can do it, okay? Listen to Proverbs 10, 19. When words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. I can honestly tell you, I have gotten myself in a world of trouble because my lips were not prudent. Now, does that make me a demon? Does that make me a witch or a devil? Absolutely not. But if you are not careful and if you are not protecting yourself the way you need to, you can be made to be presented a way that's not really who you are. But you can't really blame anyone for anything that you don't do to protect yourself in the spirit realm. Now, yes, nobody can't be out here calling you out your name and saying things about you attacking your personhood. But what you have to do regardless, it does not matter what comes up. It does not matter what comes up. Y'all got to hear me out. You still got to protect yourself. You still have to protect yourself. You cannot separate yourself from protection because you cannot control what people say or do concerning you. But you can you can concern yourself with knowing that God hates unforgiveness. He does not want you to operate that way because he says in his word, if you don't forgive them, I will not forgive you. Okay, this is so important, important for you to catch up in here, because if you don't forgive them, he will not forgive you. And I think a lot of times, y'all, I will say this before I really got this and it made sense because it didn't at first. I'm not about to sit up here and stunt. I have gotten this thing wrong multiple times on both sides. I've been the worst and been the person that played somebody. And I have been a person that's been played more than once. Listen, not the best and brightest thing to share, but at least I can be honest about it. Y'all, the whole point is truly to steal, kill, and destroy. To kill your spirit, to kill your personhood, to kill your posture, to say your gifts ain't real. Just to, it, that is the whole point. And what you have to understand is this. It's the same thing me and my friend talked about when all of this was happening with her. This probably happened, man, probably, what, five, six years ago, I'm thinking. But it's been a minute. And even now when we laugh and talk about it, it's just amazing because that same person who didn't want to forgive her and said she was awful is like she absolutely adores her now. You know, but God had to do a work. And what I found to be so tremendous was that my friend kept that good posture She was never unkind. She was never saying cruel, mean things. She never did anything. And she had every right to. Y'all don't understand something. There is nothing like having the ability to cut somebody up and to reduce somebody down to size and opting out of it. Baby, you have a whole other blessing waiting for you on the other side of that that you can't even see. Okay? There is nothing like knowing you can take ammunition and tear somebody up. And you don't even do it. It's something to be said when all you have to do is just unload every negative, horrible thing about that person. God is looking at that because, y'all, we got an option not to do that. We have an option. You know, and it's crazy because as I was watching all of that stuff go down, I remember thinking, I'm like, girl, you could just say and do so many things, but she just didn't do it. And it's amazing because guess how everything turned around? It was from a third party. It was somebody 
that was showing the ugliness and the meanness and the cruelty. It was somebody who was connected to that person. And they came in and said, oh, you mad at them for what? And when they said it, they was like, yo, I think you might be a little thrown off right here. Because that's not what's going on. But it took a complete stranger. So that's something I want to say to you. Don't, don't trip over who God sends. Don't trip. Because you can trip and you can say you don't want this and you don't want that. But you don't know who God going to send to you. You hear me? You don't know who God going to send to you. And you do not know how he going to set that thing up so that you can finally get your lesson and you can get your blessing too. So for the person who is on the negative side of it where you're not forgiving somebody. For the person who did something that appears to be unforgivable to somebody. You have to go back to the Lord. You cannot allow this situation or that person or the miscommunication to make you think that you are not a great communicator. And you might not be a great communicator today. But don't let the enemy damn you to hell and make you think that you will never be a great one. There is something to be said when... People uh, uh, attack you or you attack somebody. Come on now. We got to do both sides. If, if you are in a space where a person is not allowed to flourish and they are not allowed to make mistakes and, and, and when they make those mistakes, you cutting them up and tearing them up. I'm going to tell you something that's, that's reeking of control. You might not like it, but it's the truth. It's reeking of control and it's reeking of, do you have that person on the pedestal? Is that person an idol? Like, why are you? freaking out so badly because if it, if it was something that could be dealt with and something that could be broken down and understood those types of emotions wouldn't even be necessary and I was able to really see that I was able to see that from the outside looking in and I'm like you know what these are great people there's just some genuine miscommunication but like I told y'all for my friend, that is the mission. This is a part of her mission in life. This person was connected to this part of her story because it was also that lady's mission too. And the lady was fighting so hard, you know what I'm saying, to not let that be so, that it almost blew up and it did not turn out to be what God really wanted it to be. That's why there's a word in the Bible you see circumspect, excuse me, circumspect. That's why you got to be so circumspect in some of these situations and you got to be cautious. You got to be cautious at the things you're saying and the words you're hurling. And here's another thing that's important. You have to be honest and tell the truth. Not your version of the truth, not what you say because you're upset or your feelings are hurt, but you have to tell the truth. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter how passionate you become. It is still not the truth. If you are not telling what it is on the inside, it cannot be the picks and chooses because when it comes to forgiveness, when it comes to miscommunication and unforgiveness, the only way you can reset that thing is if you start back at one and you look at it for what it really is. And what you will find sometimes, this, is, this goes for all of us on both sides. Now, again, we take an accountability here. It does not matter. You have to look at the role you played. And once you look at the role you played, you also have to look at the role you allowed to be pay, played when it came to dealing with you. There's a whole bunch of layers to this. But the beautiful part about the miscommunication aspect is this. There is definitely death in life in the power of the tongue, and it's also always an opportunity to change it. Now, here's the thing. You cannot focus on that person. I think that's been the whole crux of this entire series. I think some people may have been coming here and maybe wanting me to focus more on the person that is not forgiving them or the person that they are not forgiving. But that is not what this is about. This is about healing. So we have to talk about what this looks like according to you. You have to make sure, you have to make so sure, okay, that you are really hearing from God. Let me just say this real quick. I'm going to say this real disclaimer. Today's, um, today's uh, episode is not as long, but it's power packed. And I'm going to get to the best parts in about two minutes. Just hear me out. A lot of times, y'all, when we are angry, when we are frustrated, we through, you done, whatever the case is, you're not hearing from God. That's a newsflash and you might not want to hear it, but I have been a victim of that too. You are so passionate. You are so angry. You are so frustrated. You feel so played, so stupid, whatever you feeling, whatever the enemy got you swirling with. If you do not take a breather. Not go talk to random people, not go, not go looking up stuff and replaying everything. You have got to sit down, preferably uninebriated, focused, quiet, and really say, God, 
Let me see what happened through your eyes. Let me see it. And if you do that and he still shows you the same thing you've been showing again, say this too: kill my flesh. If something in my flesh is make is, is starting to rise up to make me think that this is something that is actually not, I need you to stop it because I don't want to continue with it. If that's not really what's going on, you have to be able to pray boldly like that. If you are afraid to pray those prayers, you might have a bigger fish to fry. Because at this point, if your goal is healing, you're not tripping about the rest of that. You're just trying to get it done. Okay? You're just trying to get it done. You are not inundated or obsessed with things coming together in a particular way. You're just trying to make sure anything that's keeping you from being forgiving, anything that's keeping you from being kind, you don't want no parts of that. Again, I'm going to tell you some things that forgiveness is and some things that forgiveness is not as we are wrapping up. And I'm going to tell you the, the number one exercise that you can do to for, to begin to forgive yourself and to forgive someone else. Okay, that's coming up shortly. So lastly, as we round it out, I want to pray the, um, well, no, I want to I wanna pray the forgiveness prayer. But you know what? I'm going to do those other things first. But I do want to say the uh, the decree. The decree is this, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I communicate clearly and I show grace to those who may not. Okay. So let me break down to you what forgiveness is, right? Here is the breakdown to this. And this is actually on page, let's see, this is on page 20. Forgiveness does not mean reconciliation. Okay. Or re-entry into your life. So I need somebody to be at peace with that because I think some of you have been struggling with uh, unforgiveness because you keep thinking that if you if you're like, I'm really fine with it, I'm okay with it, that it's going to it's definitely a get out of jail free card or oh they get to be back in my space. Absolutely. That is not what forgiveness is. Okay. number two, forgiveness does not mean that you forget the lesson. You just stop harboring or obsessing over it. Some of you cannot get past it because you just keep thinking about it. It's just keep, it keeps hurting you and it keeps, you know, it's, it's just like sensitive to the touch. You have to understand that if you keep focusing on that, that becomes a bit of obsession. Okay. But again, this is why we got to go back to the truth because what we normally figure out y'all when it comes to unforgiveness, especially miscommunication, unforgiveness is that we might be thinking a way about somebody and the truth is they just may not know it. So maybe what they did was a small offense, but it's completely exaggerated and now it's gargantuan because you're not really saying how deeply it affected you. Because again, here comes the enemy. Again, he come tap dancing on somebody's soul and their heart, even they, you know, just everything they think and all on their brain cells because he wants them to think that, Hey, you are, you're a punk. If you say that's what you really feel. Yeah. You're awful. If you think this, you're awful. If you think that like, no, like that's the whole trap and the setup. So you want to make sure you're not setting yourself up for the okie doke right up in that space, because that's not really what's going on. That's not really what's happening. So you have to pay attention to these things. Now I'll tell you another thing. Here's another thing. Forgiveness removes hatred and hurt. That would only fester into something that can't add value to your life. If you still sitting there holding some unforgiveness and you still sitting there holding some negativity from someone else, guess what? It is going to fester. I don't care how much you think you got it together. I don't have, I don't care how much you think, oh, you're going to get them together. Hmm, I'm going to let them know. I don't care, baby. That thing going to get so ugly and crazy with you because it is going to fester. I'm telling you, it is going to fester. You want to know why I know? Been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. I'm speaking from legitimate proof. I have experienced that. If you don't remove that hatred and that hurt, it's going to fester. And some of you, you don't have hatred, but your feelings are hurt. Again, ding, 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 ding. Be honest. You're not telling the truth. If your feelings are hurt beyond what happened, if it's exaggerated, your response to what happened, if your response doesn't match, you're not telling the truth about something. See, miscommunication of forgiveness, the red flag, there's an elephant in the room. Now, depending on what side of the coin it's on, I don't know. That depends on the situation. But oftentimes, when people are suffering from miscommunication, there is some type of elephant in the room that has got to be addressed. Okay? Now, watch this. Forgiveness is a choice. You don't have to do it. 
But no matter how you came to this place, there is a consequence for you choosing this faith. If you do not choose forgiveness, there's a fate that you have to deal with. Okay. But if you choose forgiveness, your F-A-I-T-H, your faith will be restored. And then your F-A-T-E, your fate won't be edited. So I want you to really think about that. Run that back if you got to sit with it. Now, here's another one. We got three more left. Forgiveness will validate God's power while unforgiveness attempts to diminish it. The more you operate in unforgiveness, the more you keep playing back things over and over again. Again, whenever you feel like you keep doing that, you got to keep bringing up the conversation. You got to keep talking about what happened. You got to keep sitting with it. I'm telling you, y'all, this is a pro tip. This is a this is a part of the cheat code. If you keep finding yourself like that on that situation, you are not being honest about something. And you could be like, girl, what you talking about? They did me something. What you mean I'm not honest? I can guarantee you. I bet you any money. If you keep getting down to the core, again, miscommunication comes with that big elephant in the room. There's always something else guiding miscommunication. Because again, why is it an elephant in the room? Because it's about your mission. It's trying to take you out. If there's an elephant in your in the room, let's just look at an elephant for what it is. Just a big, big elephant. It's blocking you. When you're on a mission, honey, when people say, oh, I'm on a mission. They out the door. They rolling. They getting it. This literally stops your mission. It makes you not even want to do it. That's what makes it so deep because it makes you not even want to do it, y'all. I need y'all to hear me out right there. It, it, it's, it's so, it's so obvious when you're not in it, but when you're in it, it is not. You think that everything you saying is on God and everything is this and that, and you could be wrong as all get out. Like I said, you got to even, you, you, yo, just picture how I referenced another situation from some friends that I saw happen. But in my particular case, the times it's happened to me, oh, how embarrassing. And it's crazy because you, I did land on the truth. And I wouldn't even say that it was too late, but I kind of felt like I did myself a grave disservice because if I would have stopped running from what I knew it really was and I stopped being this person who wanted things to come through my filter, then I probably would have been at peace a lot sooner and things would have been flowing in particular areas of my life a lot earlier. They are now, but I can truly and transparently tell you there was some issues with me with that because I really just didn't want to be fully honest. Figure out your honesty. Once you figure out that, then you're good to go. Now, here's the next one. Forgiveness makes you lighter, unburdened, and free. I'm telling you, there's a freedom when you forgive people. When you're no longer holding on to that thing and wanting them to be this person in your head and you let it go, it literally changes your life. And here's the last one. Forgiveness allows you to remove control from that person that caused you the offense. You have to understand something. The more you allow somebody to be in a space where you don't want to forgive them, that is the more they have control over you. That's why I keep going back to being honest. That's why I keep going back to addressing the elephant in the room. Because this is what also happens with this. If you are literally on this in this space of this is absolutely what it is. I don't want to hear nothing else. That's it. It's done with. You run the risk of setting yourself up for the okie doke and a whole other level of embarrassment. Because one thing about God is, God is very clear with us about, it's just some things, y'all, even when we know we've been wronged, I've been talking about this on every episode, even though we know we've been wronged or we may have wronged someone, right? God is still God. It's still some rules and some laws in place. Look, touch not my anointed ones, okay? You can't just be messing over people, right? If you don't forgive, I don't forgive. You know, that then life is in the power of the tongue. Yo, it's a litany of words up in this space that are very clear. You don't need nobody to reimagine it. You don't need nobody to tell you about it. It is just very clear God's stance on it. So for some of us who have gone through this space and we really did not allow God to be God, you paid a price for that. You paid a price for it. And then you got to ask yourself, I mean, is it really worth it? You know, like, is it truly, like, truly, truly, is it really worth it? If you, are the, if you are on the side of causing the offense or if you are on the side of being offended, it is, is, is your view of the situation and what you are passionately believing, if it's that deep, you're going to have to go back and ask God, like, why is this this deep? And I can guarantee you it's not. 
And, and it, once he reveals to you, hey, this is why it's this deep, that's when you might get that honesty. And that's when you might get to that space of, who that elephant in the room was something serious. I can tell y'all from personal experience, when I've had that, that revelation of, oh boy, like you shouldn't have did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, dang, like that's not what you thought it was. Once that came out, I was like, Whew, wow, I need, ah, Wow. I'm not going to lie. There is a little shame and embarrassment because you never want to be on the, on the, you don't want to be on the right side of wrong. <laughs> the goal is to be on the right side of right. And sometimes that's hard to do when your mind is set to do the things that you think should be done. And you're really not being led by God. Cause I'll tell you something else. If you have other sources around you, or if you are putting yourself in conditions that are not godly and you keep saying, this is something God is telling you to do and this, this and that. That will not end well. I have done that as well. You have got to make sure you are saying that stuff in the correct place. Because if you start looking back at all of these things and you're like, well, wait, I thought it was this. I thought it was that. And you're realizing that a lot of that stuff is your flesh. The enemy is having a field day with you. Because the enemy wants nothing more than for you to be detached from the people, the places, opportunities, and situations that God has called you to be in. He don't want, he don't want that, y'all. And if you're trying to take the first thing smoking, that's going to be in agreement with what you're thinking and what's with your hurt feelings. Again, it never ends well. It never ends well. And so what I would like to uh, end up with, with you guys on page 25, I'm sorry, on page 20, uh, yeah, 24, sorry, 24. I want to break down love and forgiveness. So I told you guys I was going to tell you what forgiveness is and what it, what forgiveness is not in terms of com miscommunication. And again, communication in general, which all of these things tonight can apply to everyone we talked about. That's why I wanted to save it for last because this one is the one that applies to everything. Everything is about communication or miscommunication on some level, be it with an abuser, be it with yourself, your ego or control, all of these things round up to this in particular. So how we're going to end this thing is this. It's about love and forgiveness. I happened upon this some years ago and I wanted to share it. So basically it is the love scripture. It is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Okay. And what you have to do is put your name in the blank. So check, check this out. This is what it reads. Put your name in the blank. And when you're ready, start putting the person's name in the blank that you need to forgive. Take your time. The truth is you may never do it. But remember, as long as you don't forgive them, they have your power. Forgiveness is for you, not them. It sets you free. Sometimes you have to be okay with an apology that you never get. I know it sucks, but it is what it is. And your focus needs to be on you being the most incredible human that you can be. You got to keep showing up if for no one else show up for God and yourself. Okay. So this is the scripture. So every time I say love, I want you to fill your name in the blank and definitely get the ebook. Cause you can print the page out. I already have that. You can literally, literally print it out and you can fill your names, uh, fill your name in on the line. So some of you may have not experienced this before. You may have heard the love scripture before, but I want you to hear it now. And I want you to put your name in it. So every time I say love, say your name, and then I want you to play it back or you go back and read it. And once you feel safe, once you feel okay, like you can begin the process of truly forgiving the other person, Start to put their name in the blank. Again, like I said, that's my disclaimer. You may or may not be willing to do that and I will not for force you, but it is my responsibility to present it to you. And then you can do uh, do with it what you will. Okay, so let's let's ride out on this one. And I'm going to close out with the miscommunication prayer. It says love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. Love is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display himself or herself heartily. Love is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. Love is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love does not insist on his or her own rights or his or her own way. For love is not self-seeking. Love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. Love takes no account of the evil done to him or her. He or she pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Love does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. 
Love bears up against, excuse me, under anything and everything that comes and is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Love hopes and fades. Excuse me. I'm sorry. That should say love hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never gives up, never quits. So everywhere I said love, you go ahead and print that and you're going to put your name in the blank and then you'll put your loved ones or your friends or colleagues, stranger, whoever it is, you put their name in the blank. Now, here's our prayer for forgiveness of miscommunication. Lord, I'm asking for a reset in this situation. Miscommunication has caused me to feel offended and unforgiving. I want to elevate to a place of peace and rethinking my patience when others don't communicate on the level I think they should. Please, Lord, edit my mindset so that I don't viciously attack those that don't move when I think they should. Let me be a vessel of positivity and wisdom and respect. Although I was offended, I don't want to continue to be unforgiving. I appreciate that you are fair and just and that my feelings of offense are warranted. But now I know it's a waste of time to keep holding on to it. It's time to be free and to set them free as well. I understand that people are not perfect and I need to focus on serving you and not man. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. I genuinely hope that you all have enjoyed this series. Please again like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Make sure you hit the links below this description and you download the ebook and you definitely check out the entire playlist if this is the first episode that you've heard. But may God bless you and keep you. I wanted you to stay tuned. Next week, we start some new content and I cannot wait to share it with you. Please drop in the comments if there's any topics or anything you want, anything that you want me to talk about. And I will do that. And thank you guys for sewing. You guys have been incredible. Uh, just stuff I never expected. You guys are sending to me. It's really heartwarming and I'm genuinely, genuinely appreciative of it. So again, y'all, until next time, I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too.